Ask any Australian over 35 about the TV show It's a Knockout. You'll probably find that their eyes will light up and say, Oh, he's fallen over! Produced by Grundy Television for 10 Network Australia, the iconic TV game show series ran from 1985 to 1987 and became a very popular family staple viewing. Originally adapted by the British TV series, which itself was inspired by the French edition. Hosted by media personalities Billy J. Smith, Fiona MacDonald, and announced by Max Rowley. Hi there, I'm Max Rowley, the announcer on It's a Knockout from way back. I hope you all remember it. Each episode had a rotating roster of celebrity umpires like Ricky May, Tracy Wickham, Warren Blondell, and Dick Johnson, just to name a few. Oh, and not to forget, Combat the Dog. I don't for the life of me remember Combat the Dog, but I'm sure it was there. It was to come in with Jackie and, uh, and uh, Billy, but uh, it was amazing. It had a lovely atmosphere about it. The theme song itself was composed by Rick Turk, who is a veteran in the Australian TV industry and became an iconic earworm to everyone who watched it. Filmed in the northwest Sydney suburb of Dural, the production crew rebuilt a worn-out soccer field, Englefield Stadium, which was surrounded by a few residential houses, and turned it into a highly complex sports entertainment venue with stadium seats for the crowds to cheer on their representative state. The teams consisted of four states, New South Wales in red, Queensland in yellow, Victoria in blue, and South Australia in green. The teams would compete against each other in over 243 athletic events with a novelty twist and earn points. Each team member usually had a background of being part of their respective Apex club. Money prizes were rewarded as they stepped closer towards the finals with the grand final prize of $20,000. The show itself was a rating success, even creating special episodes such as the Celebrity Challenge, local and international editions, Heck, even a British version produced a royalty version. Each episode cost roughly $150,000 to produce in 1985 money, which is roughly $360,000 now with inflation. However, after 107 episodes in the can, residents living around Inglefield Stadium had had enough and registered noise complaints, with Hornsby Council eventually stepping in and pulling the plug. The sad thing was that due to the number of complaints from the noisy neighbours, um, we had to, because of our noise, close off the show. And it was dropped in 87, sadly. And thanks to internet fan sites keeping the memories alive, Channel 10 announced in late 2011 that It's a Knockout was returning for summer TV. Hosted by HG Nelson and Brad McEwen and umpired by Charlie Robinson, it sounded promising. But it wasn't what the fans wanted. That was really ordinary. The rebuilt was filmed in a rented stadium in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and roughly one quarter of the size of the original Inglefield Stadium, so it looked like it was really tight. There were still four teams, but this time they represented first responders, which is fantastic, but the lucky red team was replaced with the show's corporate sponsor, McDonald's. The games were small, competitive, highly difficult, and echoed what you would makeshift create in your own backyard. The reboot lasted nine episodes and was quickly forgotten about. Well, I, I thought it was weird. It, it was being done offshore in Kuala Lumpur. But the other thing that has been forgotten about is the original location for the series. I didn't, Billy. <laughs> Since the stadium had little usage after the TV series wrapped in 1987, the land itself was more valuable to put residential housing on top. So Dural received some extra homes after everything was knocked down and filled in. Unfortunately, nothing significant to acknowledge that It's a Knockout was actually filmed there was left behind. A particular It's a Knockout fan, Matthew from Cherrybrook, decided to do something about paying tribute to the location after being inspired by a fan site place a plaque on the location. This is John Bradley Avenue, which is where the show was filmed. I actually uh, have a friend who lives in that avenue, 
And she and I were speaking one day, and she had no idea, no idea that she was living, you know, on hollow turf. That is, the it's a knockout um, uh, where it was filmed. So I, I had that idea in my head. Then I one day I was just, you know, just thinking about it's a knockout and thinking Googling, and I found this great site where these guys about 20 years ago had gone gone out to um, to drill. They they travelled all the way out there, and they had um, they filmed their pilgrimage to the it's a knockout site, and they were pretty upset when they found there were houses there. And on that site, they talked about making a plaque. So so I, I thought about that, and I thought, well, that's, that's actually great. The idea of putting a plaque to commemorate this, this, this place, which has now been forgotten, um, uh, was, was, was in my head, and finally I, I went out to make it. If you do find the plaque, you might notice a spelling error. Yes, there is a typo. Um, I really didn't think this was going to be a big deal. And I didn't spend a lot of time on it because I have a job. So, yes, it's not the greatest fun in town. It's the greatest fun. So please uh, forgive me. Unfortunately, in 2019, the world lost Billy J. Smith due to an unfortunate accident. He was 78. Yes. What a pity that Billy J. Smith, after such a a wonderful career, just fell down. Uh, He had a fall and that killed him. Watching back the video... The, my favourite thing about Billy Jay Smith is his excitement, and I feel it. You feel it's genuine. You feel that he really loved what was going on, and it's just his enthusiasm. It was fantastic. Today, all we have now is worn-out merchandise and bootleg recordings on YouTube. When the 2011 reboot happened, a handful of classic episodes were released on Ten Play for a limited time. But should there be a commercial release? Well, uh, if they, they think there's a market for it, I think that would be good, pretty good. Because it's a little bit of a strength in television history. Yes, I think that could be a goer. <laughs> it may be a product of its time, but at least the memories live on. Max Rowley speaking. <laughs>